Alright, welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings in the YouTube Atheist Community. Sort of. And, uh, debate fun, yes. Anyway, alright, so last night, um, not terrible, I don't think. Start off, uh, I don't remember. And, uh, then it continued to the, some of the forgettable part. And ended <laughs> with, uh, Piro and the room crashing. So, you know. Um, yeah, there was some stuff in there, probably worth something, some political discussion, some discussion about how to make something, make some sort of positive change takes place, you know, something to get a little bit hopeful about in terms of motivating or organizing, um, people. But, yeah, we know it's, a just this horrific, awful, uphill battle, kind of, you're gonna have to get awful lucky to get anything to happen, happen, kind of thing. And everybody is just so irrational. And they're glued to such bullshit that, um, yeah, it's very difficult. But anyway, that's, you know, just one of those kind of conversations. And programming stuff, which was, you know, just how to organize the actual mechanics, the physical mechanics, not just the, the human mechanics, but you also have these structural mechanics. But you have to also the logistics of even doing that and finding a way to work with other people and to, yeah it's just you know it's, it's really you know civilization is work and you know sadly there's just nobody doing the work and you know everybody's just sitting back saying um, give it to me you know and it's like but nobody wants to make it happen it's like even the, the commune thing you know they always failed because yeah, two or three people do all the work. Everybody else sits around, smokes pot, and uh, says, "Where's you know my dinner?" And that just doesn't work. And uh, it's, it's true on the larger scale, the larger commune of civilization. Um, you know, it just doesn't pay. Uh, nobody wants to pay for anything. And um, so, you know, the the most important part of your civilization, the the mechanics of that structure is, you know, it's never fixed. So it's like our system, you know, we have this archaic constitution that has some nice principles in it, um, but it just, you know, it needs to be rewritten to explicitly define, um, you know, basic rights. I mean, we still got a country where, you know, basically we don't even have the right to vote equally. Like, that shouldn't be some sort of like federal requirement <laughs> that the states don't have a right to um, break the voting system that they don't have a right to make it so bad that people's votes can't be counted and they don't even have that as a as a piece of the infrastructure um, so you know your your vote counts less depending on where you live and that's just uh, I mean, that, these are just like obvious things to say, well, why hasn't this gotten fixed? And um, I don't have a good... I, the, the explanation is that the two-party system isn't interested in fixing anything. They're interested in special interest connivory. So that's the biggest liability we have right now, is the two-party system is just death to rational policy. And so that's got to go. Um, but anyway, I won't get into that. So anyway, so it was a useful conversation. It's just got my mind back on those subjects, which is good. But, uh, you know, and there was, I don't know, there was some other crap in there. I, I hate to call it crap. I mean, you know, no offense to the people that were part of the crap. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's just this transitioning thing. Like, we, you know, the arguments sort of have been made, and now it's it's time to sell it, you know, we've, we've, so I've sort of manufactured it, sort of have a product, and now it's just putting it in a nice package and all that kind of shit, and it's really not the part of the game I have much interest in, so I'm just reluctantly dragging myself to this realization that um, it's time to work on, you know, building the stage and all that kind of crap, and, you know, that doesn't, um, you know, so that's work, number one, and it's, you know, it's going to take time, and, you know, it's this whole investing in the future thing, and, yeah, I'm just kind of tired of it all, 
So anyway, on the YouTube, generally speaking, yeah, it's sort of a wasteland. It just can't get any wastier, right? There's just absolutely, I mean, I look at this thing, you know, and you go through these videos, and you're just like, okay, little kangaroo videos, and, you know, play your mandolin videos, and talk insane rubbish videos, and it's just, there's just nothing here. Um, in a kind of odd sort of making a, a you know, pushing a, a reasonable subject, but I mean, I don't know whether he's up to having a rational conversation about it, but just this whole idea that, um, you know, we, there's going to be a future, and clearly we might have something to say about what it's going to look like, and um, you, you can't just keep running away from the stuff you don't want. You can't keep just pointing to, well, let's not do the Hitler thing, and let's not do the Mussolini thing, and let's not do the Pol Pot thing. You have to actually point at something affirmative. You know, you have to actually be for something. Being against everything is not a solution because you're still going to end up with something in the bowl and it's going to get mixed and it's going to be put in the oven and it's going to bake. And so, you know, just keep talking about what you don't want in the fucking bowl isn't going to get the, isn't, isn't going to create something that's going to be worth eating. So you got to do more than that. And people really aren't um, prepared to um, do that because that requires um, some measure of being willing to give up something. And nobody's willing to give up anything except somebody else's rights. Which sort of brings me to Ed Edible Napalm, I think, has made another video, so I'll, I'll watch that. It apparently has a, you know, an amendum theme just from the comments. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gauging. Uh, but, you know, there's just an example of, you know, people, like even on this tobacco issue, is just they totally missed the point that, um, you know, this is the, you, you know, you, you have to have some sort of principle somewhere and this idea that, okay, yeah, let's, let's migrate taxes from the richest people to, in the world to the poorest people in the world. Let's use taxes to control people's basic fundamental rights, their behavior, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just the, the principles are all upside down. Um, that, that's not a utopia, that's a dystopia. And, um, you know, when you, when you price liberty out of access, that's even more insane. Um, so, I mean, it's just wrong on so many levels. And, uh, but people who, you know, claim to be something, some, some sort of person in favor of, of the underclass um, can't get it. And you're just like, wow. <laughs> you know, that's just pathetic. It's sort of as pathetic as like the the March on Wall Street kind of bullshit um, when they can't even figure out the obvious that you have, you know, if you want to sit there and create a movement, you actually have, a, have to have a candidate. <laughs> you can't just throw rocks at Wall Street and say, there, I've done my job. Um, again, it's that whole idea. It's really easy to tear something down. It's really easy to complain about something. The real work is offering alternatives and providing them in some sort of viable form and anybody trying to do that you know just gets so much crap from people um, you know they get nitpicked and naysayed into um, you know it, it will drive you crazy you know when you have to explain everything every everywhere you know, when you have to go through the whole thing all the time to everyone, even though it's been gone over and over, and you just, you know, you have to go back to the same ABCs of it. It's just, uh, eef. And then other people are just, you know, you know the, 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 the counter side to that is you have things like, um, whatever that's called, that stupid thing with the documentary, with the resource economy thing. You know, really smart guy behind all that crap but just totally unrealistic in the end, you know, that uh, somehow if you, you know, you're just going to magically make people smarter, um, put a premium on education, and um, take out the competitive nature of the beast, and you got to recognize the competitive nature, and you got to create good, it's like creating zoo environments. I mean, I hate, you know, that. I mean, that does sound a little bit <laughs> degrading of human character, but it is, like, you just have to figure out well, what kind of animal is it? Okay, okay, it's a polar bear. All right, the water needs to be cold. 
It needs things to slip and slide around on because it likes to do that. So you figure out what it needs in its environment and you create a nice little container to put it in where it can have its little needs met and be comfortable. And so for every kind of human you have to create a little you know a little adventure world for these different varieties of human so they can just feel like the world makes sense and it doesn't seem like that should be beyond our capability that we should be able to find ways to live differently to be different and still find the environment comfortable and not harassing and not burdensome and uh, just by just respecting those little bits of difference and saying we can make an environment for polar bears and we can make an environment for jaguars and you know it's not that big a deal I mean we're gonna have a system where they can at least live next to each other without you know chaos and conflict but whatever but yeah, it requires just recognizing certain practicalities. You know that they, you can't let them fight over the food. You can't let you know you got to prevent certain things that you know aren't going to work. And I guess that's the problem with this idea of just creating a resource economy and no money and all this kind of crap because people just ain't going to go for that. They're not going to sit there and say, yeah. Well, they're just going to recognize the fact that if you give people the opportunity to be a loafer, they're going to be a loafer. So you have to somehow reward people who actually compromise their comfort to have a better tomorrow versus the person who just keeps like, you know, can I borrow a nickel today and pay you back Thursday kind of bullshit. You know, the people who are always living for today and compromising the future to do it. I mean, you know, those two kinds of people can't be served by the same system unless that system recognizes that those two different kinds of people exist. No, yeah, whatever, that's a little bit... Anyway, enough of this preaching crap, sorry. It's, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm feeling the need to just get this thing more focused and uh, do less of this engaging in waste of time kind of crap. It's like Piero last night, I got really angry with him, he started bringing up some, you know, stupid, um, you know, thought experiment kind of idea, you know, and you're just like, well, why don't we deal with something real instead of everything always in this fantasy bucket, you know, it's things that can't happen, why talk about shit that can't happen, why don't we talk about how we can get something actually accomplished, you know, do some sort of can thing, and, you know, I'm sort of getting impatient with all this uh, you know all this the, the crap just the bullshit you know people having philosophical conversations about you know love and <laughs> and uh, what's the new word um, I don't know why this word just doesn't stay it is funny about it. some words you know you just know them but they just they won't stay close to the grab surface I mean, they're, you really know them. I mean, you're sublime there. I mean, that's a word I've heard, like, I don't know, thousands of times. And yet it's a word I have to always look for. It. I always have to, like, where's that word? Where is it? So it's kind of neat how the brain does that shit. I mean, there's a reason why there's a, it doesn't have a handle on it. You know, there's some reason why it hasn't have a fucking handle. It's like some people's names, you know, you just sit there and you can't, you can't find it. And other names, you just, yeah, they, they're in your face whether you want them. It's like Madonna. I have a, I don't, I don't even like Madonna much. But I, Madonna, just always, she always, she's always pushing her way in every time I think about music or some other thing. It's like somehow Madonna weasels her way in. And, you know, maybe it's because she did make really good videos, and maybe I watched a lot of MTV, and maybe it, you know, that like a prayer thing was like played forever, and so maybe it just fucking totally owned a piece of my brain somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's like you just can't extract some of that shit. And uh, I, it's irritating sometimes how your brain is prioritizing things because when you look at how it's doing it you know you're you're saying well, why am I reacting that way why does my brain do that with these words 
um, it, you know, it should have a different emphasis. I mean, why isn't Mozart ahead of Madonna? Kind of a thing. And everybody else, too. I mean, you just think about all the other composers, and why is Mozart ahead of all the others? You know, why? Because he had a movie? I mean, I'm, you know, the, the idiotic part is, is that's part of it, right? You know, is that if somebody makes a movie, then all of a sudden that character is higher, you know, than some other, you know. And it's just like, you know, the priorities are lost. So anyway, but enough of that. So anyway, it's just kind of a... Uh, like YouTube, I am in transition. Yeah, so we'll see where, see where it goes. Um... Yeah, the tools thing is looking sort of interesting. So the, the video pages are are getting kind of interesting in terms of this whole, you know, uh, doing the indexing of the response videos and stuff. Whenever you and you know, taking some control over that. Huh. Reply. Anyway, um, yeah, I thought more videos would pop up over there. So anyway, I can view comments from other videos in this video, which is really quite interesting, I think. So, you know, that's kind of a neat feature. So, let's go find it like this. But the weird thing is, is uh, the only one you can't view are the ones from um, Nicotine. And unfortunately, he has a lot of comments on his video, but, you know, he must have it so you can't embed his content or something. And so it's blocking me from grabbing it. So there's probably a workaround, so you know, click on Oh, it worked this time. When you think there, yeah, I don't know, something changed. That's weird. So it wasn't working before, so his new video is working. Hmm. I have no, I have no explanation for this. I mean, of all these people that have, you know made videos, no, I've, I've every one of them has worked, <laughs> except for Nicotines. Uh, yeah, this, see, that's his Paul's Egos video. That has a ton of comments. Oh, and lots of comments. <laughs> but they're, look, they're all one sentence. They're all really short, really short comments. It's Paul. Oh, it's Paul. Oh, oh, oh it's Paul. Oh, 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 it's Paul. It's Paul. Oh, oh, it's Paul. Oh, 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 oh. Just, you know, just kind of funny. I mean, you got Paul, so a nice guy and all, but come on. I just don't get this Paul worship. You know, he's, he's a nice guy, but I mean, really, it's not like the videos are like, Holy shit, I learned a lot. Um, no. He tells a nice story and, you know, blah, 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 but, you know, I just don't get it. So, anyway, yeah, he was doing one of those, you know, unfortunately he's using the Google crap, and I hate, you know, I don't use Google products. So, whatever that Google meetup roomy thing is. Um, and so he did, uh, you know, a couple of hours of, um, you know, socializing with the world because he had uh, taken the hallucinogenic, <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, I guess he wanted company, his poor brain was stressing him, um, but anyway, I don't know if that's, you know, it's not, it's not an unimportant subject, it's, it's such a worthy subject, I don't know what the Amazing Atheist hasn't made a TJ Dunn's Life video, which is really okay with me, because, yeah, there, but whatever. He does look like he's lost a lot of weight, so I, I, you know, I think that's you know, good on him and such. No, I don't know if there's anything here. Yeah, just, you, know, you can go down here. There, there he is. Yeah. You can really see it in his neck. He's got, his neck has gotten really thin. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. So I guess that'd be the news. I don't think I have any other news. Just you know, all the back to the snarky, fucking hostile, creepy, crappy, shitty fuckwits of the internet thing. Until next week. Sorry, this was too long a ramble. I'm just in a mood. You know, it's kind of a gray day and uh, just kind of really tired of it all and blah blah blah. So I'm just kind of mopey and lamenty and. So I ended up sharing that with you. That's the kind of guy I am. Yeah, evil and manipulative. <laughs> yeah. uh, so anyway, it just really, there's just the videos really have just, it's all my videos in here, which is really depressing. Oh yeah, there's a new guy. So yeah, this guy over here. Yeah.
know, load his video. I'll leave a link below. So I made a perfectly adequate. Um, okay, so video. this one's about ethylism and. So, so, yeah, it's a perfectly adequate video. So, but you can't trust these young ones. So, <laughs> yeah, you won't get used to it. So we'll see. We'll see. And such. I'll leave a link to his video. And uh, there, I accomplished something in this video. And such. I'll leave a link to the toolbar video too, just so you have it. It'll show up over here if you have the toolbar. It shows up in the description. So anyway, enough said. Until next time.